morning all. I went to the pound shop yesterday to buy some Christmas tree lights, or Christmas lights generally I suppose, and I came back with these. I came back with uh, this tree, fibre optic tree, battery operated, Merry Christmas LED lights, green LED tree lights and white LED pine cone lights. All of these items just one pound each, but today I'm going to have a look at the Christmas tree, uh, fiber optic tree, battery operated, takes two AAs. Uh, what does it do? Well, let's open it up. Okay, it has extremely thin wires. I mean, they're uh, almost like cotton. Uh, so I need two AA batteries, so let's get those now. So get that off. Ah, it lights up. Doesn't do a lot though, does it? It's got fiber optics. Not many fiber optics. Probably half a dozen. Uh, a red LED in this white base. But it doesn't flash or anything exciting, does it? Well, I suppose, what was I expecting for a pound? I just want to see how much space there is inside this base. In case there's any chance that I could modify this. Well, there is quite a bit of space. Um, by putting a little flashing circuit in there. Because that would at least add a little bit of interest to this tree. So let's have a look at um, LED flashing circuits on Google. So I've done a Google image search for uh, LED flasher and we've got various things here. There's a two transistor A-stable multivibrator here and uh, variations on that theme. Uh, there's a 555 uh, A-stable flasher circuit there. There's another one down there. Uh, here's the LM3909, which is uh, quite an old chip, 8-pin chip, dedicated LED flasher, runs off just 1.5 volts. But uh, I don't have an LM3909. I'm thinking I'm going to go for a circuit with discrete transistors, because I rather fancy building something like that. But I'm sure I've seen a circuit that uses just one transistor to produce an oscillator. And uh, yes, here it is. It's this circuit here. But the transistor is something a bit odd. It's a UJT. It's a unijunction transistor, which is a peculiar device that has an emitter and two bases. Uh, this is quite an old component and it's kind of fallen out of favour now. It was a bit of a one-trick pony. It just uh, was only ever useful for producing one transistor oscillator circuits like this. Now, I don't have a 2N2646, so I can't do that one either. Now, there is also this rather esoteric thing. It's got uh, a transistor with its base not connected, uh, capacitor here for the timing. And apparently, this uses the transistor's negative resistance uh, to make an oscillator, but it says here 12 volts DC, and I think, I would like to try this at some point, but I've got a feeling that this is going to be problematic at 3 volts, so I'm not going to use that one just for, to the, for today. No, today I'm going to use this. Um, it's a single transistor LED flasher. You can see the LEDs flashing there, but it does have some rather strange properties. If I block the ambient light, the rate of flashing changes quite drastically. Ambient light makes it flash much faster. And that's because if you notice just there, there's an LDR, a light dependent resistor. And the optical path between the LED and the LDR is part of the feedback control loop. So ambient light is affecting how that control loop works, affecting the timing of the flashing. But I rather like this. I think it's a bit of fun because uh, changes in light level will change the rate of flash. And that could add extra intrigue. Now, this idea came from uh, this web page here. Uh, let's just scroll up. 
LED LDR indicators. This is in German. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, I've used Google Translate to translate it into English. This is the circuit I'm using with slightly modified resistor values and a different capacitor actually. Now there is a suggestion here that this circuit at the bottom can be coaxed into making the LED flash with no active components at all. You do need an LDR that goes to a very low resistance for this to work. Um, I did wire this up and couldn't get it to work. Um, just very briefly, I think I might have got a bit of flicker out of the LED, but I couldn't get this to sustain a flash. So I've gone back to the um, circuit with at least one active component. Now it says here that the circuit is not difficult to understand, but I am having a little bit of trouble. Um, when the LED is on, the LDR will have a low resistance. That means this point will pull up. So will the other side of the capacitor because it's a capacitor. So instantaneously, both sides do the same thing. Then the negative side of the cat will drift down. At some point, that means the transistor will turn off. The LED will go off. The LDR will go high resistance. This point on the pos of the capacitor will shoot way down. The other side, of course, will shoot potentially below zero, but of course that's not gonna be permitted because of the current path back uh, through here. I don't know. And then somehow the uh, right-hand side of this capacitor will have to drift up and turn the transistor back on again. I'm not sure it's that easy to understand, but uh, certainly it works. Now I'm just gonna shut the blinds because I want to get it to its uh, state with not too much ambient light. So let me do that now. So that's got the LED flashing at a more moderate rate. It slows down if I reduce the ambient light even further. Now this resistor, which is the feedback resistor, negative feedback between uh, collector and base, can be used to vary the flash rate. Of course, you can also vary the flash rate by changing the capacitor, but um, you don't get variable capacitors. They're not big ones like that anyway. So I think I'm just gonna shove these components into the bottom of this tree if they'll fit, somehow mount the LDR so that it can see the light coming from that LED and make a flashing Christmas tree with just one transistor. Let's see how we go. So my soldering iron is warming up. Now I'm just gonna mark the positive side of the supply wires with this um, red felt tip, which I think is there because that's the anode, that's the cathode. So I know which way around the power supply is. Now, I may need to make a modification to this, I will need to, to this uh, battery box, because you can see just down in there, there's a resistor, looks like a 1K, and uh, I need a direct connection to pos and neg in here, so I think I'm gonna have to short that resistor out, which means opening this battery box. Actually, that's uh, red, black, black, so I think that's, 20 ohms. Anyway, it's coming out. Uh, interestingly, what I've marked as positive actually goes to the negative terminal of the battery pack. So this uh, resistor in the Christmas tree, sorry, the LED in the Christmas tree, must be one of these ones where they've put the uh, flat on the wrong side. Oh, this is a bit of a mix up. I'm going to have to double check that first. And yes, I do think this LED is the wrong way around because uh, pause via this resistor does go to the flattened side. So the flattened side is actually the anode on this one. So I've got to be careful. So probably the most difficult thing about this is actually trying to uh, get everything to fit in the base so that it's all flush. So my transistor is buried quite deep inside now and uh, soldering to it is going to be quite difficult but uh, I'll persevere. Now I don't really want the uh, LDR facing up, in other words up towards the tree, because I don't want it to catch too much ambient light, so I've got it facing directly into the white plastic um, where the LED is sitting. I hope enough light gets through from the LED to the LDR to uh, make sure that the circuit operates. Okay, all I've got to do now is connect the uh, positive and negative battery connections to POS, which is here and neg, which is up here. Let's do that now. And uh, that should be it. Now, does it work? 
Oh, sort of. Let's block the ambient light. Oh yeah, that works rather well. I need to speed it up a bit. Or maybe I won't, maybe I'll just leave that pot where it is. Let's uh, put it down and uh, see how it looks. So there it is, there's the uh, Christmas tree with flashing LED using uh, LDR for part of the feedback. Now is it still ambient sensitive? I've closed the blinds and turned the light off to try and make it look as bright as I can. Let's shield the light. Is that any slower than that? Possibly a little bit. I mean, ambient sensitivity is not my primary objective. My primary aim here is to get the uh, lights to flash on and off. And they do, with one transistor. Well, I'm quite happy with that. You can see that uh, now the light's back on, that's flashing quite quickly. And if I shield it, that flashes much more slowly. I've turned the pot a bit to speed it up a little bit. But no, I think that's good enough. Now, all I need to do is get the uh, plastic cap back on, which I think goes this way. Oh, and uh, everything is flush inside the base, which meant the transistor had to be buried, buried very deep, but I think that's going to work. Let's put that back on. And there it is. Finished. So, I could have used a, a unijunction transistor, or I could have used a 555 or the LM3909 uh, dedicated flasher IC. I mean, I could have even used a microcontroller and sat down and written software to make this thing flash on and off, but it's all a bit over the top. No, I just wanted a simple one transistor circuit, so I opted for the... Uh, LED and LDR transistor flasher circuit and I think the result is actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. Merry Christmas!